Hello, everyone. The other day I was scrolling through Twitter and I saw this post by Yosef about the updated Rails Edge Guides. And in here we can see that they've updated the uh, adding versus removing attachment section and shows you a little bit how to safely uh, like retain or persist your attachments. So if we come over to the corresponding edge guide and we search for the keyword multiple, you should hopefully be able to see the section right here, 3.4. Uh, that mentions how to do this. Effectively, you still have your form file field and your messages where you iterate through, or your, your images where you iterate through each of the images. You have a hidden field for the images. And this right here is what allows you to persist the image with the signed ID. So when you now upload another image, you'll still have the old ones there. So you don't have to re-upload all the existing images to also upload a new one, for example. Now, what this means in practice is if you come over here and you click edit post, you can see your three existing files. You could then choose another one to upload another one, or you could just click remove and that'll just get updated on the server. So we don't even have to hit up, update post here. We can just go back and you'll see we now only have two. This is really nice because it also allows us to just come in here and like, let's say we want to upload a third image. You can do that real quick and it works just fine. We can go ahead and remove it uh, just like that. It's a really smooth workflow. So let's go ahead and let's just do this real fast because it really doesn't take that long. I'm gonna do a Rails new video. We'll then go ahead and CD into the video project and run a code dot. Now I'll have a link to uh, Yosef's uh, Twitter account in or X account, whatever we're calling it these days, uh, in the pinned comment in case you're interested in following them because uh, I'm sure this isn't the only tweet that uh, we'll see that has uh, some pretty useful stuff in it. But okay, how do we actually do this? Let's go ahead and let's just create the basic uh, application like we normally would. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and we'll add this extra flavor in. So to do the basic app, first things first, we want a Rails scaffold. Which we'll just do with a Rails G scaffold post, title of string, content of type text. That really doesn't matter that much. We can then do a Rails active underscore storage colon install command to install active storage. After that, we can go ahead and do, I think a Rails DB colon migrate and then a Rails S and that should be it for our terminal here. We can then come over to our app, our models and our post.rb model. In our post.rb model, we wanna say that this has many uh, attached images and then we're good in our model. We can then come up to our controllers and our post controller and we just want to say this has, oops, this has a images, images array like that. Uh, and we'll leave our post controller open for now. We can then come into our views, our posts, and our post form. Now in our post form, we need to uh, set something up here. What we wanna say is uh, for right now, we just want a quick little label, I guess. Uh, we'll do that like right here. We'll just do a div, and then we'll use a label for our images. We'll do a BR, and then below that, we can do a file field for our images with multiple set to true. Now, if we look at the active storage file right here, or the active storage uh, uh, edge guide, I guess, uh, we can see that what they suggest doing is iterating through each of the existing images. We're gonna set this aside for now and just look at what the default behavior is. We can then come over to our post partial, and in our post partial, I'm gonna go ahead and just copy a quick little bit uh, for actually doing this. So we'll just say, all right, this should have all of our images being displayed. And then let's do a BR after that. And then we'll do a end for the loop. And then we'll do another end for the if statement, something like that. So this should display all of our images in our post partial. Let's come over to localhost port 3000 slash posts. We'll click on new post to give it a test and a case. And then I'll just choose two files real quick. So I'll choose this one and this one. Go ahead and click open. We have two files. We can create post. Everything seems to have worked just fine. We have both of these. But now if we come in here and we edit this, and let's say we just hit update, you'll notice right here, we're already running a deletion uh, because by not selecting any files, it actually just purges both of the old files. So now what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that the old files persist. That'll be our first step. To do that, we can come over here and we can add this loop that it suggests into our form. So right here, uh, we'll do it after the form label, but before the form file field. Just go ahead and we'll put this in here. What we're doing here is we're saying, all right, for the uh, at message in this case is what they're using. Uh, but in our case, we have a post, right? So we'll just say post dot images dot each do image. We then want a form field for the images. We want multiple set to true and we want the value to be image.signedid. So that'll give us all of those. But what happens if we don't already have an image attached? 
Well, in that case, we probably want to do something like a quick little check to make sure that our images are attached. So we'll leave all of this here. And now let's come over here and let's refresh this page. We'll choose two files again. So we'll choose this one and this one, click open. We'll click update. And now we've got uh, some stuff that's probably appearing on this page. If Brave would actually refresh, there we go. Now, if we click on edit and we just click on update, you'll see that they're still here because we're still including these hidden fields here, fields here with the image signed ID. So that's cool. We now have these persisting. But now the question becomes, how do we actually view these? Well, again, we have this loop right here, right? And in this loop, we're iterating through each of the post images. So what we can do is we can say, all right, we have the uh, hidden thing being displayed here. What if after, uh, oops, let's do it after the uh, form field, we do something like a image tag. We set this to have the image and a height of 100, kind of like our post partial right here. Uh, and now if we come over here and we click on edit this post, you can see both of these appear. So what we'll do at the end of the loop is we'll do a BR just so that everything is neatly tucked away. And now we can see both of these being displayed in our, uh, in our partial here, our form. Okay, so that's step two. We now have these persisting, we have these being previewed. How do we add those remove links so that we can like upload a third image if we want to, like this one, click update post, uh, but then we can like remove these because right now there's no real way for us to do that. Well, that part's a little bit more involved, but it's not terribly difficult. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come into our routes real quick. This is inside of config and routes.rb. And in here, what we can do is we can establish a route for removing posts. We'll just do it real quick. We'll say we want a do block for our posts. So we'll say resources post do, member do, and then we'll give it a delete. And what this is gonna correspond to is something along the lines of, uh, let me do this. It's going to be a remove image post path, which takes in a image just like that. And this is going to, of course, be a delete uh, request. So we can come into our form and we can say, all right, we want to be able to remove these. So below the image tag, or I guess next to it, we can do a link to remove. We want this to go to that remove image post path, which takes in an image. Then we can optionally include a method of delete, but as you're probably aware at this point, this method of delete doesn't actually work in Rails 7, uh, but we can go ahead and try this just to see what'll happen. We're gonna leave it like this. We can save this, come over here and refresh. You'll see there's no errors yet. Uh, but of course, if we do this and I just click remove, uh, this should tell us it doesn't have the method get right here. No route matches get. And there's two reasons this is an issue. One, we don't have the controller action yet to remove this image post path. But two, you'll notice we have this as a delete method, but it's trying to do a get request here, even though our method is set to delete. And that's because in Rails 7, we now have to declare a delete method by saying this is a turbo method of delete. I don't know if there's a better way of doing this, but adding this into your data will, or at least should, allow you to click remove, and then you'll get a different error in your terminal here, uh, where it hopefully says, you know, controller action doesn't exist or something. Uh, right here, controller action uh, could not be found in post controller. So let's go ahead and let's make it exist real quick. We can come into our post controller and we can, uh, let's say we'll do it right here below the destroy. We'll say def remove image and, and in here what we're gonna do is say at image is equal to, uh, and you can probably do something like active storage colon colon attachment dot find params. And uh, I think in this case, it's actually just passing back an ID. So we'll just leave it params ID. After we have the image, we can then do image.purge later so that it doesn't happen right away. Because if it's a really big image and you try to delete it right away, you might get like a bit of lag where it, maybe the system gets stuck trying to delete for a second. So clicking the button causes the website to spin for a second. So instead we'll just let this happen in the background. And then afterwards we can do a redirect back to a fallback location of request.refer. And now if we come over here and we refresh, we can scroll down here, we can click remove on this bottom one, and you'll see that fires off a delete request right here, where it says it deleted with the key of whatever, and that's been just straight up, you know, nuked from orbit. We now have both of these images here still, but we can go ahead and just hit back if we want to, and that's fine. Now, the final thing I can show you how to do is you don't need this form here now because we have these neat little links, right? So we can actually come to our post partial and in our post partial, we have the image tag that's just being displayed right there. Uh, we can actually just paste this into our image tag. So right here, right below the image tag, we can do the link to again, 
This will be a link to remove for the remove image path. It takes in a data turbo method of delete. We can go ahead and save that over here and refresh. And now you have these remove links on your post itself, not just in your forms. So you can click remove. Of course, our data confirm isn't working, uh, but that's just another quirk of turbo. So we can actually probably just get rid of this unless you like really want to keep it. Uh, and then you probably want to watch a tutorial on how to do that because uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. But uh, for now, I think this is pretty much all I wanted to show you. I'm just cleaning this up for the uh, git commit. Uh, so hopefully you got something out of this and hopefully I will see you in the next tutorial.